Okay, so we're going to be looking at Rogue, and Rogue is easily the strongest class in all of Hearthstone Classic. It's really just because of this one deck, Miracle Rogue. Uh, I'm sure if you've played the mode, you've played against the deck a ton, maybe you've even given it a go. So let's just take a look at why this is the strongest deck in all of Classic. Uh, two major things to highlight here as far as the strategy goes for playing the deck. The first is Gadget Sand. So Gadget Sand is going to be able to use all of these cheap spells to be able to draw like crazy. You can have tons of draws in a single turn, especially if you're doing things uh, with prep into something like Fan or Shiv that's going to give you an extra draw. Tons of draws for very little mana, and it does its best work when it's concealed. So if you can play this with six mana, or if you've got the prep to combo with conceal on five mana, uh, just going to be great for sitting on the board, continuously drawing cards, and you're doing so so that you can get the ultimate combo, which is Leroy Double Shadow Step. That alone is 18 damage for 8 mana, and you've potentially got more. Uh, prep is going to allow you to do even more, uh, but even Eviscerate, Cold Blood, potentially Deadly Poison, Blade Flurry, you've got other ways of dealing damage with this deck. You can get well over 20 off of a completely empty board if you've drawn enough with this gadget sand. Uh, stealth minions, just very difficult to deal with. You know, if you're playing against the deck, you're going to want to use tools like Tink Master, Deadly Shot, Brawl. But all those cards have random effects to them. So they're not even perfect for dealing with something like a stealth gadget sand. Uh, it's just very, very difficult to deal with. And Leroy, unsurprisingly, you know, the star of the deck. It is uh, just a crazy strong card. Now, everything else in this deck has a bit of flexibility. If you're playing in a control matchup, for the most part, the other cards here are just used to enhance that draw engine, to make sure you're hitting Gadget's hand, to make sure you're getting the combo with Leroy. So things like Azure Drake, Fan and Knives can even be fine on a completely empty board if you're playing against something like Warrior or Druid. Um, and then these other tools, you know, maybe you're dealing a few points of damage here or there, you know, get a Farseer down, get SI down, uh, maybe even try to go for an Edwin strategy. You'll really be able to feel it out. The more you play the deck, the more you try it, you'll see in what scenarios you want to lean into these things. Uh, and then in the more aggressive matchups, if you're playing against a zoo, you know, things like backstab, very effective at dealing with... Uh, Flame Imps, Knife Jugglers, that kind of stuff. You're going to be using this to target minions. Maybe you need a little bit more heal just to stay alive. Even Eviscerate, just dealing two damage to a minion can often be very effective. Uh, but it's got the ability to combo and deal with things like Dark Iron Dwarf. Uh, just a lot of strength from this deck. I probably don't need to talk about it too much. Easily the strongest deck in all of Classic. If you're playing at High Legend, you're going to be seeing tons of Miracle Rogue and tons of stuff that tries to counter Miracle Rogue. So uh, the higher the level you're playing at, the more you need to be aware of this deck. Now, I should note, it's a pretty high skill cap deck. Uh, you're not just going to be able to pick it up and play it without kind of getting a feel for how it works. Um, yeah, it's going to take some time, but luckily the deck is extremely good, so not to worry even if you're not the best at it. Uh, maybe you're not going to be able to climb to, yeah, rank 1 legend, uh, but you can still climb very effectively. I'm personally not very good with the deck, I don't have much experience with it, and still every time I play it I have a positive win rate. It, it's just that good. Uh, now there are some variations you can do with Miracle, and I want to highlight one here. So this is a questing adventurer rogue, uh, which is really just derived from Miracle. You know, we got two questing adventures here, added another cold blood, and I think those are really the only three additions there, cutting a few things uh, to make it fit. But I wanted to highlight this because there can be a lot of variation with Miracle Rogue. I've seen people play Gnomish Inventor at 4 because, as you'll see, uh, it's very thin at 4. Usually on that turn, you're going to be doing something like Hero Power in a 2-drop, or maybe you're even just passing, uh, comboing a 1-cost thing with SI. 
Uh, but some people really do, yeah, swear by that Gnomish Inventor just because it's a body to get on the board and it demands being dealt with because it's always got the potential for cold blood to become like a 5-4 uh, or it's going to ruin kind of those random effects like Tink Master, like Brawl and make it easier for Gadrasan to survive when it's concealed. Uh, but yeah, Questing Adventure, and that's one of the cards that you can sub in here. I do think this is a strictly worse version of Miracle. It's more just a way to be able to play this card, get a little bit of variety, try something new. Uh, I, I think it's very difficult to make this card work in any other deck. It's got some potential in Zoo, uh, but ultimately this is probably the best place to play it. Um, Another one that you could put in would be Malagos. Malagos can work in Miracle, and you're probably going to go ahead and put in some Sinister Strikes with it. Uh, and then you've got to worry about, you know, what are you doing? Are you concealing Gadgetsan? Are you concealing Malagos? Um, depending on the matchup, depending on how the game develops, you'll, you'll kind of get a feel for it. Uh, but yeah, a lot of flexibility with, you know, do you want two Farseers? Do you want two Fans? Uh, Shiv is always a questionable choice. I've seen uh, sometimes two saps, sometimes one. There's there's a lot of ideas surrounding Miracle and its variations. So there's a lot you can play with. And yeah, just that basic Leroy Gadgetsan combo. Uh, you're going to be able to make almost any of them work to some degree. So feel it out. Here's just one kind of way to, to push you, encourage you to do a little bit of experimentation. Now, below both of those decks, I would put this Backspace Rogue. Now, I don't have really a lot of experience. I'm not sure if I've ever played with the deck. Uh, I've played against it a pretty good amount. Uh, and I think this is basically the best aggressive Rogue that I've seen. Uh, it does very well at dealing a lot of damage, but it's a little bit more on the board control side of things. Some of these earlier cards, you can get down a ringleader, even fairy dragons, a bit resilient to some spells. Just in these first couple turns, you're going to be able to get a few things down to kind of secure the board. Maybe you can plop down a Mukla, and if you've you know gotten rid of their minions, they can't utilize the bananas. Uh, SI does a really good job of swinging the board in your favor early on if they're playing something like Zoo where you're really trying to secure the board. Uh, but everything else here, yeah, just built to deal a lot of damage. Your Lepronomes, your Cold Bloods, you've still got Leroy with Shadow Steps, and then you can develop this Assassin's Blade with Deadly Poison. Uh, obviously, it takes a lot of time to get the maximal value, you know, four turns with that four durability. Uh, it, it is going to take some time unless you go ahead and, and blade flurry it. Uh, but yeah, very, very effective deck. Even though I haven't really played with it much myself, I, I felt like I needed to highlight this because it is a pretty effective deck. I do see people play it at Legend at high ranks, and it does seem to do quite well. Um, so yeah, give it a go. Uh, this is a really good starting place for an aggressive rogue, and I think that's one of the archetypes that rogue can do pretty well, is that aggressive uh, style. Now, finally, I'm going to show you Mill Rogue. Now, this deck is weird, and there are other variations of Mill Rogue. I think if you take a look at this, you're going to be a little bit surprised because it doesn't look uh, very heavy. It's actually a very aggressive Mill Rogue. Uh, I built this and had a lot of success with it. I don't want to say that it's necessarily good for climbing. I think a lot of it is luck-based. Um, yeah, not quite ready to crown this as, as a real good deck, uh, but it's not terrible. This isn't a complete meme. In fact, this is built to be an aggressive deck against other aggressive decks, and then it's built to mill some cards in the control matchups. So if you're playing against a zoo, you know, you've got things like Elf and Archer, Backstab, Ringleader, Knife Juggler, all these like early pieces that can start to secure the board, push some damage to face, you know. You're, you're going to get these draws, but you're never going to fill a Zeus hand completely. But it's going to keep you competitive in those kinds of matchups. But then when you're playing in a control matchup, so something like Warrior or Druid, suddenly cards like Vanish become very good. 
with these low drops that have either battle cries or they're able to utilize the summoning of minions, uh, you'll be able to pick up a lot of things, potentially even killing some of their minions if their hand is full after things like Cold Light, uh, and then replay them on the same turn or subsequent turns, push more damage, apply more pressure. Uh, it's really not made to fatigue uh, your opponent. It's it's happened. I've done it in the Warrior matchups, but that's that's not necessarily the goal. The goal is to fill their hand mill some useful cards you know mill a grom and alex something like that kill minions by filling their hand and then playing vanish that kind of thing so as strange as it looks uh yeah so surprisingly effective now i do think you can build a mill rogue that is more catered to that control style rogue doesn't have as many good control tools things like assassinate it's just very expensive removal i don't typically recommend it uh, but i don't think you need this kind of aggressive early minion stance either it really depends on what you're trying to counter so probably a lot you can do here i've even subbed in the black knight at times where i was facing a lot of druid i just removed it because well i haven't really faced that much and so there's not a lot of taunt targets but that's another thing that could work well, you know, with the Panda here, uh, with Vanish, able to play it once or twice. Um, yeah, a, a lot that you can mess around with, but I, I recommend you give this a go and, and see if you can be as lucky as me, sit around that kind of 50% win rate. That's basically Rogue in a nutshell. Uh, this Miracle Rogue, I think, is just... Whether you're playing it or whether you're going to be playing against it, it is just worth understanding. So playing the deck, even if you're not a fan of it, will give you a better understanding of a lot of the matchups. Um, but specifically, look at countering that gadget sand, conceal, see what you can do to prepare for a Leroy combo, even though it's very, very difficult because on an empty board, you know, you're preying on taunts to not get sapped. Uh, you know, maybe you can put down something like an explosive trap, but they can always test that with their hero power. Uh, difficult, but a deck that I think you really need to understand if you're planning on climbing at all in classic. So. Uh, a lot here to play with, a lot of fun, a lot of good stuff. Hopefully you can find something in Rogue that you enjoy playing.